Right then. So, this is where we left off last time. Um, now, I've been working on this, but I'm not going to show you what I've done because I want to show you what I went through to go through, go to it. So, so this is our game. Connect four. Right, so it's simple, text-based, nothing flashy, you know. I was playing this early and it kept beating me. Ooh. Oh, I got you. <laughs> so, it works. The problem is, if we want to submit it to the competition, we are massively over by almost 500 by half a K over. So, what we're going to do... Hello, Doxter. What we're going to do is we are going to try and optimise this code. Um, that we did last time. Now, like I say, I've done all this, so there'll be a lot of copy and pasting if I get myself all tied up in knots. Um, I can show you what it does come out, but I think you've probably seen on Discord how I've been getting on. So, the thing that I started with was looking at the program. Yeah? So this is our basic program, and we've just compiled that in, we've not compiled, assembled, developed it into assembly. And it runs, and it runs pretty quick as well. Um, but we now need to, we need to get it below the 1000 mark, because we need, we, if we want to submit it, we, we've got to do that. So the next point in optimizing your assembly code based on your basic code is to find all cases of repeating because basic has a nasty habit of repeating the same thing again and again and again and again and again and that is wastage especially in assembly so what we need to do is we need to look at this code and, hang on, let's make it bigger. Can you see it if I get it that far? Yeah. Um, look at this code and find anything that's repeating. So the first thing that is jumping out is things like this. All right? In fact, that. These if statements Except for these, this first bit, which we'll ignore, these if statements are the same. In essence, they're constructed the same. So if I move this over, move that over, and that over, and that over, there you see, we've got a something equals x, and a something equals x, and a something equals x, then go to 800 they are effectively all the same. The only difference is, is this number that we're passing in there, passing in there, and passing in there. So, what we can do is try and create a routine that does that line in its entirety, but we only do it once. Because at the moment, we've coded it four times. So this is where clever, being inventive comes into it. This is not traditional optimization where you, you may call your um, variables, zero page variables. That's traditional, straightforward optimization. This is now code optimization. This is looking at your code and saying to yourself, hmm, I'm sure I can make that better. So this is what we're going to do. Now, like I say, I've already done it, and I just in case I've got, just in case, 
just in case I get myself tied in knots. I've got it here, just in case. I mean, I could show you, I could show you um, what it's going to look like. Best thing to do is probably in here. Uh, where are we? Where's the re where's the game dev? Is it in here? Oh, brilliant! Mark, if you're on here, this is brilliant. Or as I put, said it, bloody brilliant. Right, that is what we're going to end up with. Yeah. But I I want to show you how how, how I've done it because. As I was posting those things, I was getting questions saying, "How how how you've optimized it? How did you how how did you save that much memory?" So here we are. So this is what we're going to do. So let's tackle this first. So the line seven thirty onwards. So let me just move that out of the way, and let's find line seven thirty onwards. So that's gone. So, did I do that at the top? Yes, I did. Ah, here we go. So line, you know, basic line seven thirty, and seven forty, seven fifty. Can by the way, can you see that? I don't know if you can see. It. Is it big enough? There you go. One more. Probably better. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a routine effective that effectively does this if statement. This part of the if statement. And this one. So if I bring it back. We need the, the you got to you got to say to yourself right what do I need to do? So we've got three parts of this if statement. We've all we've already worked out the equals and not equals because I've got those two routines that I wrote last time. So the question is now how do we optimize that? Well, it's effectively if I do this. It's a x1 equals x and a x2 equals x and a x3 equals x, then go to 800. All right? So, what we're going to do is we are going to do that part of it. All right. So we're going to do this part of it. And what we're going to do is we're going to do the same sort of system as we did with the the equals to and the not equals to. We're going to set the carry flag. So we're going to set the carry flag saying it's true or not clear the carry to say it's false. All right. And we're going to apply this three times. Now, how are we going to pass in those parameters? That's another challenge because we've got pluses, we've got minuses, got some big neg negative numbers. We've got lots of big negative numbers. But remember, KISS, keep it simple. Stupid. Yeah? KISS, always think, don't overthink things. Now, when I was going through the process of doing this over the weekend, I was overthinking things. Oh, I got beautiful routines that was do lots of lovely things. And I went, hang on a second. And this is why I didn't want to stream it, because I went down five, maybe six different rabbit holes, and then I started again. So what I'm gonna do what I was going to do is gonna show you how the end result came about. So we need to pass in three parameters, x1, x2, and x3. And they are both positive numbers 
and negative numbers. So, how are we going to solve the positive and the negative? Well, we could do it one or two ways. We could pre-calculate it and then pass it in. So, we would load B, add 1 to it, send it on, and then add 2 and then send it on, then add 3 and send it on, or do my sub 10, sub 20, sub 30. But, then that's not really optimizing it because you're taking three parts, three important parts of this statement and you're having to work it out before you send it in. So how can we post, so let it process it from within? Well, the clever thing is, is just look at your program. Just look at your program and, and try and analyze what you see, okay? Now, the biggest pos in, the, in this particular section, the biggest positive number is three. The biggest negative number is 33. Right, so that's a that's a range of what forty for example for for argument's sake. Well, forty is one byte. In fact, it's yeah, it's one byte. So we could effectively um, tell it minus one, minus two, minus three, plus one, plus two, plus three. And, in, and instead of passing the end result, where we work out B plus 1, we just pass in plus 1, pass in plus 2, pass in plus 3. Because remember, everything is B. B doesn't change. So we can say, okay, X1 is not really X1. It's, and I haven't got a symbol for it. Uh... What can I use for a symbol? A symbol for delta. We'll use that. So that's the difference. Y, oh, okay, yeah. The de delta of x1. Yeah, yeah, that gets confusing. We'll use that. The delta of x, I mean, it's that's power, isn't it? That's the power. Can't use that one. Uh, no freaking symbol. <laughs> delta. All right then, so the delta of x1, the delta of x2, and the delta of x3. So we are effectively passing in what we need to change b by, yeah? So we work it out in the routine and take out all the working out from outside of it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new file in fact, no, we won't. We will use the one we've got, which is the utilities one. And uh, let's just make sure I've got mine up. Because I don't want to get it all completely and utterly wrong. Is this... Yeah, that's the wind check, isn't it? Yeah. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a routine. Let's uh, blah, blah, blah. let's put a header on it. Oh, I've done it again. That one. So this. Uh, da, 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 da. Did I put a comment on mine? No, I didn't. <gasps> right, so this is a win check uh, line test to check three elements of the grid for a three in a line scenario. Oh, me and my spelling. Wicked. So the inputs 
Now we are going to be, so we can do do it one or two ways. We can we can um, do um, store you know pro store it outside and then read the values inside, or we can pass them in with our registers. Now luckily we have three registers X, Y, and A. So we could say that the um, the registers are the The registers are the uh, pass-ins, yeah? Now, so we're still here, right? We're still here. Now, what else can you tell me about these, these four if statements? So we've worked out that they've all got three tests. They've all got three different deltas, yeah? What else can you tell me? No? Anybody take get, care at a guess? Now, this took me four different iterations. So I'm skipping from the first one to the last, right? Straight away. But I'm not quite. But look at the numbers. Look at the numbers. There's a pattern. Can you see the pattern? Now that's the end result, Doctor. The redox the, the result's gonna be the same anyway. But look at the look at the pattern of the numbers. Not quite, but you're getting there. You're getting there. Look at the numbers. So this is plus one. This one's plus two. This one's plus three. All right? Minus 10. Minus 20. Minus 30. Minus 11. Minus 22. Minus 20, uh, 33. Can you see the pattern? Well, they're all multiples, right? So let's say exactly they're all multiples. So if we say the delta of x1, right, this one is two times the delta of x1, and this one is three times the delta of x1. Can you see that? So how many parameters do we need to pass in to this function? The answer is one. And the, and the parameter we need to pass in is this, the delta of x1. Because we can work out the other two because there is a rule that's governing all of them. Delta x1, two times delta x1, three times delta x1. Oh yeah, it's gonna make things a lot quicker and it will make things, we're gonna save memory, yeah? So, what I'm gonna do, hang on, I think I've still got it open, haven't I? Output. Right, remember that number. In fact, I will Open, oh, Linux, oh, text editor, ah. Right, can I type in straight, oh, uh, where am I typing? Oh, he's typing right at the top, can't see that one. Oh, can, right, okay. Right, that's our first number, so, a rid a ridge, a ridge in now total. 
Right, that's our original bytes. Hello! Welcome to the stream. Right, so that's our original bytes. So we are now going to try and optimize the wind check sense, uh, the wind check part of it, and to see if we can make it s smaller. Yeah? So the first test was 730, wasn't it? Yeah, 730 is the first one. Right, so we will grab, we will grab all of this. All right, so that's effectively our test. And we are going to create another one. So we now know that we want to, let's just make sure I get this right, yeah. So this is, the accumulator is the delta from bar B first instance or x1 right and that's our input so let's uh, let me just paste that in and we'll, we will as a reminder we will grab that up to there and we'll copy that in there as well so this is what we're trying to achieve that So this is x1, delta x1, 2 times delta x2, 3 times delta x3. All right. Now this is our resetting of our test var. Right, we can do some about that as well. In fact, it's there. I did it in the last stream, didn't I? Alright, so we, we're resetting our var. Now, what we need to do is we need to um, start working out the values that we need to put into the Y registry, yeah? So let's get this started, shall we? So, so we always start with var b. Clear the carry. Add our delta. So we'll just put that there for the moment and transfer a into y. And because we're going to be multiplying. The quickest way to do the multiply is to add. So we're going to push our result to the stack. Right? And you'll see why I'm doing that in a bit. Now, we need to put in here what x1 is, the delta of x1. So kick allows us to do a very clever thing. And that is to do inline labels. I don't know if you've seen me see me do it but basically right so this is uh, win check three um, test delta x1 that is an inline label yeah so here we need to store WC3 3 delta x1 right so we are storing our delta from the variable which is x1 delta x1 in the place of this ff we are storing it in the place of that ff do you understand what i'm doing here because if you don't, you would probably re recognize this. Yeah. So here, we did the label there, and then we say plus one because we want to affect this. 
but we don't want to do that because kick allows you to have inline labels so we're saying this label is pointing to the location of this byte yeah so we don't have to do the plus one right so we have to do the next one well that's dead easy we just copy this copy that paste it there but instead of doing load var b we do pull from the stack clc add delta x2 which is the same as delta x1 do the check roll it into the var and then we do it again so here PLA add so this is three so we need to store it WC three three adds it we don't need to push it to the stack because we don't need it anymore get rid of that do that and that is our routine so here where we do this basically what we do now is we say uh, branch if not equal so that means it failed so we'll rename to this say line failed test and here is line past test so we're not doing jump 800 because what we're doing is if it's past the test then we set the carry and then we will jump to the exit and the exit can be here so we'll grab that as well put that there CLC don't need to jump to exit because it's the next instruction So that is our routine. That is all we need for the wind check. So I'm not going to do anything more. I'm not going to rush off. We're going to change the wind checks now to match what we're doing. All right. So we need the routine first. Oh, we ain't give it a we ain't, did not give it a name. Right, what did I get? Oh, there. Win, check, three line test. That's what I called it. I'll keep the naming convention right. So we'll copy that. And then, first one is 730, right? So JSR, that. But first, we need to work out the delta, which in this particular case, if we go back, to the program oh it's up there anyway so in this particular case the delta is plus one so what we need to do is LDA hash one that's what we're going into the routine with and then what we're going to do is when we come out of the routine and I'm just checking that I'm still on the right track because knowing me 730 Yep, I'm on the right track. So, the end result of this was branch of carry clip. Ooh, no, 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 not in there. Not in there. Naughty boy. It's in here. Branch of carry clear or branch of carry set. Yeah? Now, the carry set was we are jumping to basic line underscore 800. That's our carry set. If everything is right, we are jumping to line 800. If it's wrong, let's go down here, 740. Basic line. 740. Right, can you see what we've just done? Right, we have just taken all of this code 
yeah, and shortened it to this. Admittedly, we've copied that routine somewhere else and made it into a, fun a JSR, but if I delete this and then go to 740, Right, I want to do that, do that, right, this is exactly the same as this. The only thing is we need this here in front of it because if you look at the line there's a test before which is if it's greater than 30, right? So if it's great, if it's uh, less than 30, it jumps out. Here, we need to put in, load the accumulator is our delta, so our delta is minus 10. Okay, how are we gonna work out minus 10? Is there a calculator in Linux? Aha! Uh -huh. Hey! Alright then. So, have we got a program mode? Programming mode. Get in there. Get in there. Right. What we need to do. So, working in decimal, yeah. So, we say 0 minus 10 equals. Hex. Oh, it's giving me, it's giving me, oh no. Let's cheat. Right, zero minus 10 equals better. There we go. Thank you, Doctor. F6. You see that? F6. That's all we need. So you put in dollar F6. And then when that adds in our routine, it's going to do a ones complement add. We, we ignore that the fact the carry is being carried over. We don't want to know because we haven't got another byte to add to. But it, then it works it out. So that is line 740. So we can delete all this rubbish. All right till we get to there and then we're going to 750 and 800 so we can get rid of those two lines let me move this put it there right the next line well we don't need that because it's in our routine copy that paste it into there right so minus 11, calculator out. So minus 11 will be F5. Am I correct, Doctor? Right, so we do that. So our condition is now 760. Get rid of that. Put that there. We don't need that. We need the test. So we'll copy this. So this one is minus nine. So this is going to be F7. Remove all that, get our conditions. 77. Get rid of that because we don't need it. And that is those. That's in though. So that is the four. That is the four if statements now compressed. 
and almost compressed onto a screen. It would have been if I hadn't have made it bigger. Now, I should be able to. Let me just check my F7. Yep, yeah. yep, 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 yep. Right, I should be able to run this and it should still work. All right, here we go. Okay, four, five, four, three. Ooh, where are you going? Okay, I'll throw you a curveball. Seven. Seven. Aha! Six. Seven. Get in there. Oh, and the crowd goes wild. So as Doxter's just pointed out, we have now made a saving. So after win. Oh, I can't see that. Is there any preferences view? No preferences tools. Oh can't see tools. No, I don't want to misspell view. Is it in view? Highlight mode. What's that? Uh, I can't see that line. Uh, okay, after win check, it's that. So we've saved 80 hex bytes already. All right. So the next thing is, right, have we got any more of these if statements that are like that? All right, so uh, let's just make it bigger. Do we have any more? Well, we've got one here. So, so that's not the same, but these are So I'll do the same thing again. So this is a x1 is equal to e and a x2 is not equal to e and oh nope then ct is equal to ct plus x3 no plus 1 and M, open bracket, CT is equal to B plus X3. Do you agree with that? Yeah? Does that look or does that, that statement look all right? You, would it, will it marry to all those, um, those five lines? Right. Now, same thing again. Pattern matching. Is there any patterns? I mean, I've just seen one and I haven't got it in my code here. So it's even better. It's even better. Yeah, that's what I've just spotted, mate. Right. So what Doxter's on about is you've got x1 and then x2 is plus 10 of x1. Work it out. 1 plus 10 is 11. Minus 1 plus 10 is 9. Minus 10 plus 10 is 0. Minus 11 plus 10 is minus 1. Minus 9 plus 10 is 1. 
So, we're back in the same boat. One variable. But hang on, we've got one here. Got x3. Is there any pattern matching on that? The answer... Anyone? Is x1. Look. Plus 1. Plus 1. Minus 1. Minus 1. Minus 10. Minus 10. Minus 11. Minus 11. Minus 9. Minus 9. So we have another routine where we're passing one parameter in that can fulfill all of those different variants. Right then, let's get in there, shall we? So line, so the first one's line 550. So let's find 550. Here we go. So line 550, that's 540, 550. Right, so what we're going to do, we're going to copy that. All right, copy that. We'll paste it in our utilities as a new routine. And let me check my code. So I name it right. What did I name it? I want it to make be the same, but the different the problem is there's a difference because on this code I passed in two parameters and we've just figured out it's one, which is brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Right, so I called it. I called it this. Oops. Right, let's copy this. Paste it there. So this is works out the works out all the possible moves the computer can take. I'll, I'll, I'll live with that and the input is the delta from v bar first instance x1 so our, our, our equation so to speak is this that so let's work it out so let me move that to there. Oh, I don't need that anyway. Don't need that. Right, so we're going to do the same thing as before. So we're going to load A, put a bar B, we're going to clear the carry, we're going to add a number, and then transfer into Y. So this one, what did I call it on mine? What did I call it on mine? Aha, here we go. Aha. Oh, here we go. Computer possible to test X1. So we are going to STA there, and I've just realised, <laughs> but there's a dog on the telly, just realised that needs to go there. Right. So we've done that. That's the first one. Don't need that. Do it on the next one. 
put it here but I've missed something I've missed something because we need to push this push to the stack pull from the stack CRC add hash 10 yep yeah. compare branch if not equal to our exit well it's um, what did I call it last one oh line failed test yeah we'll use the same one line failed test clear carry and then RTS so this is going there. Oh no, it's not. It's there. That's that one. This one is going uh, to exit. So now we need to work out the end bit of the equation, which is M. CT CT plus CT plus 1 and then memory array of CT well, that's easily done so we load that we load A with bar B clear the carry add with A number and then store it into the memory array but here we're going to whoops gonna put that there but this is result so STA CP2 result so x1 we've now add in to the result of b storing it in the array and then increasing var um, ct and then we're coming out and we are setting and that's what we're missing here set carry Ugh. set carry go away um, and then it exits so now we can come back into here and do the same thing so let's grab that oh, why is that's it stop playing me up thank you put that there we don't need that anymore we just need LDA hash one JSR Compute possibles win. Then we can do the test. So branch if carry clear. Remember, if it, the carry's clear, it failed the test. So if it's if it's set the uh, the carry, then we jump. Let me just make sure that I've got that right. Yep. Yeah. And we do the same for the others. So we just literally copy that. Paste it in there. So this one is FF minus one. So just in case you want to be proof, zero minus one equals FF. Now this one is going uh, let's get rid of that don't need that so this is going to line 570 don't need all that lot that's all done copy again paste get rid of that 
And this one's minus 10, which is F6. Yep. This one's going to line 580. So we can get rid of all this now. And do the same again. Get rid of that. So minus 11 is F5. Shout if I'm wrong, Doctor. 590. And I think we've got one more. Yep, we have. Get rid of that. Put that in there. So this is F, this was 11, minus 11, so F5, F6, F7 is minus nine. And that's going to 600. Ha! <laughs> Don't need to. 600 is the next line. Can save two bytes. Wow, saved even more bytes because I left that in. Yep, I left that in. Ha! God, I could have saved four bytes myself. Right. So that is now. Where are we? That is now these four lines now compressed into one line and a few calling codes. Yeah. So we knew we know what the last assembly was, which was all the ones. Let's see what we are now and see if it still works. So four, five, four, three, two. Oh, you sneaky little. Ooh. Um. Well, I've got to go five. Six. Oh, two. Oh no. One. Where's the eagle? Oh, he went there. Two. Come on. Oh, you get. You got me. Oh, 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 seven. Yes. <sighs> the crowd goes wild. So now we are at. Oh, look at that. One oh six eight. Right. So. After computer computer possible moves is that is that 121 bytes we've saved already or is that another 121 bytes John let's work it out right hex mode clear one one eight nine minus one oh six eight equals wow 289 bytes already <laughs> bring it on now basic compilers can't whoops basic compilers can't do this sort of optimization they can't they can't do it they just they just <laughs> All right, Doctor, I'll let you off. They can't do this sort of optimization, right? Basic compilers just take the base and compile it in assembly, which we did in the last stream. Now we are trying to put exactly the same functionality in a smaller space by seeing the patterns. Right, so we've done that area now. <laughs> some six some stuff at the bottom of page one. <laughs> but 
No, we're doing it properly. Right, now, have we got any more? Oh, we've got a rack. A rack load. Right. So. Oh. Oh, I've just seen another pattern as well. We're going to actually make this smaller than I've actually got it. Ha oh, ha, I'm loving this. Right. Can you see a pattern? Ow. Any takers? All right, let me help you out. I'm the teacher. So let's just move this over so you can see. I might have moved it over a bit too much. Just put it there. Right, can you see a pattern? So let's do the typical thing, x1 is equal to x and a, x2 is equal, is equal to x and a, x3 is equal to e and a, x4 is not equal to E, then MV equals B plus X5. Forget the go-to. So can we can we make that even more efficient? Okay, let's see, shall we? So 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 times 3 is 3. Minus 1 plus 1. Now minus 1 plus minus 1 is minus 2. Minus 1 times 3 is plus 3, isn't it? Oh, this way I get all confused. Minus one times three. No, 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 no. Let you off. Yeah. I know there is some situations where it does that. Plus ten. But that's plus ten of that one. Yeah. Now, the, the pro... <sighs> the problem is we're trying to... We're trying to use a routine that will cover as many scenarios as we can. Now, this block, as you've quite rightly said, is x1 and then x1, uh, x1 times 2. Yeah, so let's do this. So you're quite, let's put another row in here and copy that. As Doxter's gone and said, this is two times x1, three times x1, and this is 
3 times x1 plus 10. And that is ah, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. Doesn't work on line three. Plus one, plus two, minus one. That's not three times x1. So it falls over. But Yeah, so that's x1. Oh, it throws a spanner down here. I was just about to say that the second one is x, x1 times 2, but it throws a spanner there. That wouldn't be right. not right there either right so this that's x3 but you're right we could minus 1 plus yeah so if we come down here x3 is here so that's plus 10 that's plus 10 that's plus 10. That's... Ooh. Oh, right, we're ignoring these. These are, th these are three tests. These are only three tests. This is the We're looking at just the four tests. One, two, three, four. So you, you're, you're right, Doctor, by saying that this is x3 plus 10. X, so th plus 3 plus 10 is 13. Minus 3 plus 10 is 7. Minus 1 is 9, plus 1 is 11, plus 2 is 12, minus 2 is 8, plus 1 is 11. It even works on this one, 1, 2, 3, uh, plus 10, plus 20, yep, yeah, that's right. Oh, it falls on this, no, no, minus 11, plus 10 is minus 1, minus 9, yeah, so, right, okay. So we're sending in three parameters, x1, x2, x3, x4 is x3 times 10, and the result is actually x3. Let's just check that. So plus 3, plus 3, minus 3, minus 3, minus 1, minus 1, plus 1, plus 1, plus 2, plus 2, minus 2, minus 2, plus 1, plus 1. Plus 10, plus 10, plus minus 11, minus 11, minus 9, minus 9. Bang on, bang on, mate. That is the equation for this, all of these here. So we've, we've got a routine that that's going to replace. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 lines of code with just one routine and cleverly placed um and we've got three registers so we don't even have to use any memory <laughs> this is working out better than i did it right so once again we are back in the realms of uh copying and pasting so we need to find where's our first line of code which is 230 Line 230, 250. You should be the teacher. Hey, <laughs> you're doing all right, mate. 
Right, 2.30 is there. So we are copying. We'll copy that as well. I'm going to copy that. To there. Paste it into here. Now what did I call it? It's the 4, isn't it? Oh, that's what I called it. So I'll copy that from here. Right, so all I've done is just copied my header. So this is a t uh, this is a test four elements in a row for a possible move. The inputs is the accumulator equals x1. Uh, x reg equals x2. Y reg equals x3. That's all we need. That is all we need. So I need to change this because it's not x4, it's x3 plus 10. So we're going to do the same thing again. So load L, the A, clear the carry. Add a specific number, transfer into Y. But where, what are we going to do? No, X2 is different, X3 is different. So what did I call the elements? Oh yeah, computer move uh, uh, four line test x1 so store a in cm4 l1 right copy and paste again so that's this one so insert that there so this is loading but this is now x2 so do that there. Here we are here. This is X3. Go back up to the top. CM4, X3. Now, the difference here is we're using X3 later on. So what we're going to do is we're going to push that to the stack so we can use it in the late, late thing. And the late thing is, is there already, look. So pull from the stack, add 10, transfer to Y. Wicked, wicked, wicked. Right, so we'll use the same, we'll use the same labels as before. So we'll just grab that. Right, so we are going there. Done it again. Keep pressing the wrong keys. Plus. Now, our, our end here, we said it was actually X3, want it B, plus X3. So we need another thing here. So what did we call it? So computer move four line test result. Copy that. There. Right. So 
store it in move, set the carry, jump to exit. That's it. That's the badger. Right, I'm just going to flick to the utilities over here so I can have the um, that, that bit open. We'll come back, you'll we'll copy that. Come back to here. Right, we get rid of that because we don't need it. Put that there. Right, so we are JSR that. Now we are putting in X1. So in this particular case, it's LDA hash one. Um, X, LDX hash two. Yep. And LDY hash three. Instantly, I've seen a problem. X, Y, Y. Right, so the same mechanics. Have we got one up here? Mm, uh, yeah, I should think so. There we go. Same mechanics as that. So branch of carry. We've said set is the result, isn't it? Set, yeah, branch of carry set is go to, is go to 650. So we want that clear. So if it's set, then we go to 650. Get rid of all this. Where's he branching to? 240, 240, that's where he's going. Or I should say that's where I'm going. <laughs> that's it. That is the essence of that if statement. So we just literally rinse and repeat. Get rid of that. Paste that. So this is minus one. So this is uh, dollar FF. Dollar FE. Dollar F D. No, that's not right. Yes, that's right. That's right. Oh, I'm getting confused. F D is minus three, isn't it? Yeah. So we're going to two fifty and then six fifty. So we get rid of all this lot. Rinse and repeat again. Get rid of that. So we are one, two, F, oh no, 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 F, F, 260. That's the next line, so we can get rid of all this now. Rinse and repeat. Minus one FF minus two FE plus one. Oh, we'll leave it a one. So that's now going to two seventy. We can get delete all this lot. that plus one oh one minus one ff plus two oh two two eighty got 
one more line on this section. So rinse and repeat again. One, minus one, minus two. 290. Yep, it's 290. <clears throat> right. Oh, we got another one. Oh, rinse and repeat. <laughs> FF, uh, FE01. So this must be going to 300, I think, or is it 310? 310. Still going to 650, so I get rid of all that. There's 300, 310. Now this is this is slightly different, it's because it's got an if statement in front of it, but after the if statement, it's still rinse and repeat. Copy that, paste that in there, grab that, paste that there, get rid of that. So we are minus 10, that's F6, minus 20, ooh. No, that's not right. EC, EC, and then plus 10. So this is going to 330. And then grab all this. And rinse and repeat again. So we don't want that. Oh, hang on, 330. One, two, three. One, two, three. Well, oh, it's still a four tester. Yeah, we're still we're still on the right track. Right, so oh come on John, get a grip. Plus eleven. O B. Plus 22, oh, <laughs> that's 1.8, I think. 1.6. Uh, minus 11, so F6, F5. No. No, yeah, F6, F5, minus 11. Then that is going to, must be going to 3.40. Yep, 3.40. Get rid of all this. Rinse and repeat. So, oh nine, eighteen, that's twelve. Minus nine is F seven. Yes, F seven. So I think that's going to, where's that going to? 380. Get rid of all that. Right, that is all the four, the line, the fours, all the fours. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine, nine we've got rid of. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes. Right then, let's see if it still plays. Come on. Come on. Right then. Four, five. Ooh. 
five. Two. One. Oh, I thought I had you then. Um, four. Uh, four, 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 four. Where is, where's he going? Ooh, do I do it? Do I do it? Do it? Do it? Two. I fell for it. Three. <sighs> Right then, so how many bikes have we got now? OE70, oh, oh, get in there. So, after computer um, Dane uh, four in a row danger tests is now that. Wow. So we started off with 1189 minus, and we're now down to O E seven O. 793 bytes saved. <laughs> oh, well done, Doxter. I didn't see you there. <laughs> we're doing all right, aren't we? And we finally crashed through the thousand mark. Right, so we still have some tests, which are these, the threes, two, three, four, yeah, so it's these here. And that one as well, this one as well. Let's put them all in line. Come on then, are you working the, the equation out? Are you working the equation out? Oh, sorry, mate. Where did I put a plus two and not a minus two? Oh, here. Good call. Right. So, um, where are we? 340. 350 there. So, have you worked out the equation for this? Well, it's exactly the same thing, yeah? So we'll do the typical x1, x2, x3. Can we simplify it even more? X, I presume you're talking X3, yeah? So 
So x2, x3 is x2 plus 10. Minus 10 is 0, minus 9 is plus 1, minus 11 is minus 1. Yep, yeah, that, looks, that looks bang on there. So plus 1, plus 2, plus 1, minus 1. Arr, minus 1, minus 2, yeah, okay. So it's going to be x1, x2, and x3 then. Or is it? No, this is x2. Plus 2, plus 2, minus 1, minus 1, minus 2, minus 2, minus 10, minus 10, minus 9, minus 9, minus 11, minus 11. Ha, huh, cool. Hello, Twitch, ignore. Not ignore, ego. Right. So, we have got a three elementer. <laughs> Listen to me, the professional. So, I'm going to copy it out here, the header. And I'm going to paste it in here. And we will copy this as well because that's at the bottom of it anyway so this is the same so we're not got x3 this is x2 plus 10 and then mv back to 380 mv equals b plus 2 and MV equals B plus X2, which we've spotted. Right, let's copy this function in then. <laughs> Plonk it in there put some space right so the first one is x1 so what did I call them same as them x1 and this is a 3 So the first one is store A. Are we using Y? Nah, we use X. And we don't need X3, because X3, this is that. <laughs> Cheers, Doctor. Um, in my code, I had an X3. And as you quite rightly, we don't need an X3. Let's get rid of that. Transfer it into Y. Do it. Right, so for X2, so X2 store X. Right, so that's two and with X2 we need to push to the stack, pull it back, add 10. Right, so then the test here is if it's not equal it's line fail test. And then load A, CLC, ADC, A number, which we will do, ooh, undo, which we will take that and put it there, but this is res. Grab that, and put that STX there. 
and JSR reset. So that goes to the fail test. This then is set carry, set carry, and then we go to the exit. And we clear the carry if it failed. So this is a three test. A and X is all we need. Right then, let's do this. So our very first one is there, 380. So we don't need that. JSR, that. LDA, hash. LDX hash right so one and two so we need to do the same thing as we've done here and we are going to definitely going to 650 but this is now going to 390 Rinse and repeat. Get rid of that. This must be going to 400. One and minus one. Rinse and repeat. Get rid of all this. Yeah, it's definitely going to 400. Get rid of that. Minus one, minus two, four one. That might not be four one. Oh, it's four two. Rinse and repeat. So OA minus ten is F five six. Four thirty. Where well, was no four thirty? Oh, four forty. Okay. Hello. And I think rinse and repeat again. Get rid of that. Add that. 9 minus 9 is F7. Oh dear. Get rid of that. So 450 is where we're going next. Right. Oh. We're doing the same thing again, but we've got a test in front of it first. So get rid of that, paste that in, put that up there because that's where it belongs. Right, so plus 11, so A, B, minus 11, F6, F5. And we are going to 460. Right, that's done those. Right then, let's see. Right then, four, 
five, three, four. Oh, nearly had you. Um, two. Let's throw a curveball. Um, seven. Why did he go there? Okay, seven again. Oh, I've got you. I've got you. There's no way of win losing a five in a row. Get in there. <laughs> right. So, uh, oh, hey, up. So, after, right, so this is after computer three in a row tests. Is that and I can't spell for toffee because <laughs> I can't see what it's saying. So, so we got a K. We got a K back, just shy of a K. Oh, wicked! So, with some simple looking at the basic code so here we are so looking at all the basic code we found things that repeat themselves many many times so we've coded it in assembly many many times and the only thing that's changed between all these lines is in this particular instance one two three three parameters in this instance one two in this instance, one, one, and in this instance, one again. And we've saved over a thousand bytes in memory just by creating uh, go, sub, um, go sub subroutines for these particular line tests, which means now we have got So what was it, Doxter? Oh, I've got it on my text thing, Anna. OD90. So we have got, right, so hex O F F F minus O D nine O equals. We have six hundred and twenty-three bytes to play with. 623 bytes. Get in there. Get in there. So, now to pretty fly up. Now, like I say, I've already done this. And, but I'll show you what I want to do. So I think it's in here. Here we go, connect four. This is my first cut. But I didn't do that. Because it <laughs> almost another game. <laughs> yeah, could fit another game in there. Six hundred and some bytes, can't we? But this is this is what I wanted it to look. But the problem is there was not enough space to put all the bits. So what I did was then chop it down. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna copy the, um, the, I'm going to say the matrix then, <laughs> the matrix, what did I call it, oh print board, that's what I, print board, right, so I did some tweaks to the initializer, yeah, so I made it black, um, what else did I do? All oh, right, okay. And then I created an array of screen row locations to make life a bit easier. 
So memory. So we add in memory. These. So I created some zero page locations in memory that we're using. Now this is, um, yeah, I need that as well, don't I? Right, that should do that. So what we're doing here is we are creating an array. Have I not got, yeah, mem import memories in there. Oh well, it'll sort itself out, space, see if that does it, yeah. So what I've done is I took a, I took out a leaf out of Mr. Minter's book and um, created an array of um, locations on the screen by row. Um, it's only what, 50 bytes. Um, but it makes life a lot easier when you want to put the stuff on the screen, like in the print board here. Now, the print board is just, a, at the moment, it's just a load of text. Uh, and we run through the array and print the text. But what I did on um, the print board here is... First, I added this. <laughs> I made it all white. Right, let's just run it. Let's just make sure we're still working. Yep, still working. Right, so we're all white on a black background, yeah? Now, I'm going to change the way the board is printed out. Um, and what I'm going to do is... I'm just going to copy and paste and then um, and then explain what I'm doing. So we are not using that at all. Right. Let's get rid of that. So we're not using this at all. And we'll stop short of board line, which is there. That's it. So what I'm doing is I, and, and this is basically stuff I've learned from Min, from um, reverse engineering Min, Minter's code, was um, I am creating, I'm print, uh, put, plotting the screen out um, two rows at a time. So this is row one. So this is basically doing the first row. And what it's doing, it's, It's print. It's print. It's plotting that character, then that character, then missing, moving to the next one, then printing that one, and then that one, and and then it's when it's done that, when it's done that row, it skips to this row here, and then skips to this row, and then the second part starts here, does that row, and then that row, and then that row, and it builds the um, grid. going to say so this is printing the top the top half of the the tiles and so we we put character 207 increase y then 208 and increase y again which is moving on to the next one i then test y to see if it's fallen off the the rows and if it hasn't then it goes back and does but if you look the x is the row counter and i increase x by two then I go to the screen character the screen row addressing array, get them, set the uh, zero page, and then run through it again. It was the quicker way of doing it than trying to work it all out with loads and loads of mathematics because it was just work it was just horrible. Then this is the second. So we're starting on row four, and then we do row six, row eight, row ten, blah blah blah, and carrying on. So now if I run it, we end up with this. Now it's going to look a little bit screwed up. There you go. So now we've got our tile array. And that tile array is now going to stay like that. 
it's going to stay like that because we're not going to print to the screen anymore. We're not going to print. We're going to print to small bits of the screen, but that's about it. Um, because we don't want to be constantly draw, print, print, uh, printing to the screen. Uh, we don't want lots and lots of text that's going to take up lots and lots of space, you know, for characters up, down, left and right. No, we're not doing that. What we're doing is we are going to create another utilities, where are we? We are going to create another print function, which is based on this. So I'm going to copy this. and paste. Now this is just print string. So we're just printing a string where A is low and Y is high. This time we are going to go print at string. Print, print text at a certain point on the screen. This is just print text on the screen. And this is what I had in the system already. So I should have that memory set up. Zero page high, low, low, high, low, 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 high. Should sort it. Should do it. And what this does, it's going to print. It's going to print text at a specific location on the page, on the screen. And the way we do this is use one using one of the kernel functions. So if I load our trusty book, yeah, our trusty book, and Control F. Oh, what's find on this thing? Find. FFCO next next there we go oh it's not FFCO it's uh... oh FFFO isn't it there we go plot so plot this reads or sets a position Set, reads the cursor position on the screen or sets the cursor position on screen. All right, so we can actually pin, we can say be at that column, that row, and start printing from there. And that's what we use. So, what I'm doing is, is I'm setting the zero page up from our X and A and Y. So, I'm using the same philosophy as the print. And then I'm reading the first two cap, the first two bytes in, and those two bytes are the x and y points of the screen. So I can show you this by changing the text, right? So here we've got our array at the bottom. You know, our pointers at the bottom. So one space, two space. Yeah. So that's right. So here I'm going to put in byte. So the first one is row. So we are talking row 18, 18, 0. That's the column. So if I change our print routine, which is just here, so instead of Baz print screen, it's now print. Um, at string. Why aren't you seeing that? Oh, it's took it. Get rid of those because we don't need them. And now F6 again. Remember when the 1, 2, 3 was at the top? This should now be too far over. Got me X and the Y wrong way around. Hang on. So that's X18. Here we go, F5. There we go. So it's now put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But that is one too low and one too over. So we'll just make say and seventeen. F six. Oh. 
Now, I was doing this. Oh, was I on the wrong one? F6. That's better. There we go. So our numbers are now in the right place, but our text is all screwed up. So let me just check that I'm, I'm not missing anything. No. Right, so where did I put the text? Your move, which column? Ah. So here dot byte and I put it at 0, 020. So we just need to find where I print there it is. So we'll copy that, paste it there. So that should now be underneath our text. There we go. It's your move, which column do you wish? <coughs> Excuse me. And so we're going to put all the stuff in there. So we've got the title. So let's do the title. Title screen. I think I've got that up here somewhere. Yeah, there it is. Title screen. So in our screen setup, we can do the title screen then. And this makes it a lot easier than doing lefts and rights, ups and down, you know, cursor left, cursor right, because each one of those takes a byte of memory. What else have I done? Um, yes, okay, so I've all the text, all the text, so your move, you can't move there, is all on the same level. Um, right, we'll get rid of those 13s because we don't need them. And get rid of that 13 because we don't need it. And that one, don't need it because that's carriage return. Get rid of that. And that. Get rid of that. And that. Get rid of that. And that so these are all print hats, yeah. So let's find all our prints and change them for the print hats. So uh, da, 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 this one can't move there. Uh, da, 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 da. Keep going, John. Keep going. Uh, the human is one. The computer is one. Uh, stand by for the computer. Should have some more in here somewhere, I think. Aha, there we go. Call it a draw. That's done. Now the problem with um, the problem with putting text in a specific position is that it all overwrites. Watch, and I'll show you what I mean. So we've just taken taken a few bytes out of what we're doing to add a screen, and then you know, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. And you notice it's flashing, and it's flashing because I'm printing the board out every time. Don't need to. Now you can't see the moves because we haven't written that routine yet. So I'm just going to blindly try and beat him. But can you see it's overwriting in the same spot? Yeah? And that's what we don't want, yeah? 
Come on, computer, you can beat me. I'm going blind here. <laughs> it's taking longer to think about it. Oh, it was a draw. I know it was a draw because it breaks out. Right. So what we need to do now is we need to uh, we need to illustrate what we're going to illustrate on the screen um, where people are going, and now. Instead of using letters, we're going to use colours, right? So we're going to use colours to do that. So we're going to take what we've got and um, show it using colours. And this was my argument about using uh, colour rammers of an array. <laughs> Which got very heated. So here we go. So we'll put this in utilities. Right, and what this does, it, it looks through the array and basically scans across the screen and sets the colours of the tiles. So it is blue for... blue. If there's no tile there, it's white. It's blue for a human and yellow for the computer. So what I need to do is, in the code is tell it to show the board state. So where it was printing the board, we are now showing the board state. So we've done the we've done the um, interesting bit which is the optimization. Now this is just tarting the thing up. So four. There's me, there's blue. Right, five. Five five. Oh, I didn't put it in, did I? Uh, four. Ooh, okay, three. Um, six. It's going to be interesting. Seven. Oh, he's wanting me to go there. Um, four. He didn't take it. I'm having that four. I won. I won. Right. I did win. It's just that it came up. Dang human, you won. But because we're overwriting and we've got no game cycle yet, it's come back and said... You know, which column do you want? So we need to clear out that bottom bit. And also we need to add the the philosophy of um, a game cycle. Yeah. Now, for the game cycle, I did something, just did something really, really simple. Yeah. So what I did is I created another variable called var... Um, another, I think it is. Yeah. And then all I do is uh, branch if uh, equal to zero to try again. Yeah. And then um, if it's if it's not equal to zero, so so. When we um, when we do the get initialize game, initialize game, we need to set that. We can do that there. Sty var another. So that's initializing it. And then back up here, we can then go and this is what I this is what I did. Um, I just did a quick text 
print out. So that's the text. Um, where's that? There it is. Text play again. So I'll put that in there. There's text play again. So what I've done is we test this variable. If it's zero, we're still playing. If it's not zero, we I've got some text that says press play, play uh, space again uh, to play again, and it checks for the space bar. And if you've pressed the space bar, then it initialises the keyboard buffer and then starts again. So we need to put all this code in here. So we need to mark the places where the um, where the human has won, and the computer has won, and the stalemate. So there we go. So here we go. So we've got LDA hash dollar fifty five. Store it into var another, and. We need to jump to there, jump to basic line 840, and we do the same thing on this, doing it again, on this one, and where's the, ah, there it is, uh, no, that's standby for the move, where are we, where's the draw one? There it is. So we set that, and instead of the break, we just return. So that's now added our game flow. Very simple game flow, but that's all we need. It's just very simple game flow. But we also need a way of blanking out the um, the text line. And the way I've done that is to literally create a function called clear at and so what I'm, what we do is once I have once the computer has done its move so that's here computer moves prints this does the check clears out the line and the, the clear out is just a very very simple um, if I can find it, there it is. It's just a very simple um, loop of print apps. And so basically, what it is is the X is the row, Y is the column. And I go and move to that point, print a space, and then move to the next point, print a space, and move to the next point, print a space. So we set the initial point and then we say print spaces. Yeah. And I do it for the entire row. Alright. Oh, I don't need that. I've just copied that twice. So we should have a little bit more presentable game. Now yeah, which one? Four. There we go. Five. Now you see you see it come up um doing my move, but it's so fast it disappears again. Let's see if I can beat this thing. Three. Uh, three, two, two, ooh, six, ooh, I don't know which way to go. One. Oh, you. 
Oh no. Three. Oh, he's missed it. He's missed it. Three again. You've beaten me, human. Press space to start again. So then, we press space, starts again. So that's the cycle. Now, it's not printing. Oh, 22. It's 20. Have I got everything at 22? Yeah, so that's 20. And then we need another one here after print. No, not there. Here. Oh, no, start. Because that is going to wipe the board out. So now it's just pretty fine everything. So I've got a load of stuff that I pretty fied. So we've got um, the tiles. So there's the tiles, and I put them in the print board. So I put them there. So let me find them in here. Oh, I might as well copy that lot as well. Put that underneath the title. And go back and get the other bits that I need, which are these. So we're using all print apps to place the code. So if I do F6 now. There we go. And it's as simple as that. We have taken a basic game, right, that in basic blew the 1k at uh, the 4k limit, the 1000 limit by 1 point something k. We can then last stream spent the entire last stream uh, doing what a basic compiler does. It's taking the bot, taking the lines and converting them to assembly one line at a time. But when we started, uh, sorry, when we finished that stream, we was too big. We couldn't, we couldn't do it. So then we have to do some optimization. Now, all I've done is basic optimization. There's, there's a whole rack of optimization we could do. See, if I put this, show the memory here, right? Why is that? Oh. That should put a stop to that. Wait, well, should. Oh. Hush import. There we go, it's gone. What we could do is all these variables here that we reference, yeah, we could put them in zero page. You know, we're not going to be using basic. So let's just say that um, let's look at the map and let's see where we could convert this lot to so i reckon a7 onwards let's have a look what is in a7 cassette start of pointer for starting address of screen scrolling <laughs> so we probably couldn't use A7 as a starting point. Or could we? B0. Current file name, we don't use file name. Second, current secondary address, we don't use that. Current device, we don't use that. We don't use that. P cassette point, no, no. Monitor timer. Right. So we've got a bingo, which is that B naught. So we could use B naught. 
but I'm using C3 and C4 so we'll have to relocate that lot. Seven oh, we could relocate them to seven oh. Um, no, no, seven oh, seven three. Oh no, because I'm asking, I'm asking for a number on us, so I can't use that. What can I use then? Forty five, forty six, forty seven, forty eight. Yes, we can use those. Forty five, forty six, forty seven, and forty eight. So let's rem that lot out. Do a copy. So forty five, forty six, forty seven, forty eight. We'll leave the board array there because we only reference that in two or three places, but all the variables we could, so we'll run that out, start it at B0. Right then, let's see how much memory it takes up now. Oh, one variable we, one variable we need to. Uh, gonna have to be choosy on our zero page, but look, it's OEB six, and we've put a load of text in it. Straight away, we've we've done a massive saving. But you've got to be careful what zero page you're using, especially if you've still got um, basic banked in. Let me just what's. Oh, cursor flashing. Oh, that doesn't help. Um, oh, the screen link tables there as well. Oh. Let's go forward, backwards. So that's basic. Routines convert number of floating points. See, we don't use that. Ooh. 19 right let's start it at 19 see if we can get this working in zero page 19 we'll run that back out and put it back to C zip C one F six. See if that doesn't screw us up so much. Oh compiled the memory didn't I? Ah. There you go. So four, five. Yeah, it's not liking it. It's not liking it. But it doesn't matter anyway, because we are less. So with zero, if everything was zero page, it's O B O E B six. So that's zero page. Right, and when we can do it again now with everything back to normal, OF31. OF31. So that is a big difference just by. So OF. Three, two minus O E B six. 
There you go. I'm using 124 extra bytes just because I'm not using zero page for my variables. So if I was really, really tight for space, which I'm not at the moment, I would drop down to zero page for all my data storage. But back to the original question, how did I take um oh how many how many have i got I've got them running <laughs> how did i take my code my assembly code which blew the 1000 mark by nearly 5 12 bytes and still get everything and all the text in and all the the tidiness i mean one thing i haven't put in which i want to put in let me uh, run it i uh, let me run it I want to put a version number around here, around there. So let's put the version number in. So memory, so I need another. See, I've got some memory here that I don't use now. So I can get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that. Don't use them. That's saving bytes. Right, so TXT version number so byte so uh, put naught coming up we'll figure it out in a minute so version 1.0.1 1. that'll do so one two three four five six seven eight nine so nine so I want to put it on row 23 um, now that's column 23, 9, 30, and then row 23. And then go to our, copy that, go to our display, board display. There we go, print board, and put that in there. So I'll take a copy of that. F6. So we should now have a version number, there we go. And we've still got bytes to play with. So four, five, uh, three, three, four, three. Oh, he's gone and fallen for it. Three. Right, I wiped it out. It's gone and wiped it out, so I need to. Um, where's me? There, 22. I wiped it out, and I shouldn't have done. Four, five. Five, four, seven, six. Ooh, I thought I could have got away with it then. Um, two, one. Hmm. Two. Three. Oh. oh, he's game. Oh, he won. Ah, I defeated you, human. Right, and I just noticed something. We need. We need it there. 
there. And also there. That's it. Four, five. Oh, I've got him. You beat me, human. Press space again. Well, there you go. A game for the Cassette 50 competition. And coded in basic, converted to machine code, and then optimized that entire machine code to make it fit. And we've got bags of room left. Bags of room left. Look at that. That's bags of room. Right. I think, I think that's a good place to, I'm going to tidy this up. I'm going to tidy this up. But I wanted to get across to show people because I got a lot of questions asked about well, over the weekend when I was doing this. I mean, I actually, I, this is actually smaller than the one I did because we saved some more data. Um, I was I was being asked, how are you doing it? How you how you you've, you converted it from basic to machine code? Now how are you optimizing it? How are you getting these big these big space savings? And you've just seen it's all about looking at the code seeing if things replicate and if they replicate what parts of them don't and are they um can you build one statement with just a few parameters and then run it very many times with just those few parameters and once you've done that you're saving yourself a shed load of bytes like we did as Doxter put. Yes. I mean, there's my Discord, there's Shalom's, there's um, C64 Mark's Discord. There's plenty of people out there that's willing to help. So, I think that lesson today <clears throat> has been a successful one. Right, I'm going to tidy this up a bit. Tidy the code up and get some comments in there. I'll put it up onto itch.io and submit it to the competition. So you'll see it soon when I've uh, done it. And I hope um, this has inspired you to make your own uh, gaming basic for the cassette 50. Ooh, what's that? Oh, I've got some bits. Thanks, Microman. Cheers, mate. Um, hopefully that's inspired you to create your own basic <laughs> oh <laughs> cheers Doxter thank you very much <clears throat> I'll try again hopefully this has inspired you to make your own basic game for the cassette 50 and if it's if it blows the the limit you can either do what Stuart did with mastermind and chop it down so it fits or convert it to machine code and then optimize it after that well i hope that you've enjoyed it i've enjoyed it i've i've quite i quite like doing these things um i like you know trying to be creative and inventive of how especially right being in, inventive and creative around coding not the the game because i can't make games for toffee but coding wise i love being able to solve this puzzle I've got to get I've got this program that's too big I need to make it smaller how can I do it all right well I will uh, sign off is there anybody online so we can raid who's online I'd like to thank all the patrons that are contributing to my channel without you guys I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing right now thank you very much